Your data logger needs a program to read sensors, store data, and do control. We'll be using Shortcut to generate a simple program. From the Program category of the LoggerNet toolbar, select Shortcut. The program generator opens. Select New Program. Select the data logger model that you're writing the program for. I'll choose a CR300 series. The scan interval is how often the data logger wakes up and takes measurements. For this tutorial, we'll set the scan to one second and click Next. The first time you run Shortcut, you are prompted for the first notch frequency. Choose 50 Hz for most of the world, 60 Hz if you are in North America and parts of South America. After that, all programs will use the same setting. You can check or change it later from the program menu. Likewise, the first time you run Shortcut, you are asked to select which group of sensor files will be displayed when creating a program. Campbell Scientific Incorporated, United States, or Campbell Scientific Limited, United Kingdom. That, like Frequency Notch, can be changed later through the program menu item. By default, the data logger's battery voltage and processing board's temperature are measured. It is a good practice to keep these. We're using a Type-T thermocouple in our example today. One of these is shipped with every data logger. If you don't have one, you can use another sensor that you do have. Thermocouples require a reference temperature. For this tutorial, we'll be using the CR300's processing board's temperature, P-Temp, as our reference. Thermocouples are temperature sensors, so we'll select the temperature folder, and specifically, it is a Type-T thermocouple, so I select that here and add it to my sensor list by double-clicking or clicking this arrow. We're going to use all the defaults. If you wanted to change the name of the variable that stores the temperature measurement, you could change it here. At this time, you can add additional sensors in the same way, or you can wire the sensor to your CR300. The wiring diagram and text provided show where the sensor leads must be connected to the data logger's wiring panel to take good measurements. Incorrect wiring, or not following the diagram provided, is a common new user error. It's good practice to remove power from your data logger before making changes to your wiring. I'll disconnect the USB cable. To open wiring terminals, use the small flat blade screwdriver provided. Insert the wire, taking care to ensure it clamps down on the conductor itself, not on the insulation or colored part. When you're done, remember to reapply power. Go back to the sensors section to add additional sensors as needed. When you're done adding and wiring sensors, click Next. This is the output section where you will specify the data that you want stored and later copy to your computer. This is the information that you need to do your job, one of the reasons you have a data logger. Enter a name for the first table. The name needs to start with a letter and has to be eight characters or less. In CR Basic, you can use longer names. I'll call mine one min. In this example, you'll want to store data every one minute or 60 seconds. Since the interval is 60, choose seconds as the units, or you could have changed the interval to one and used minutes. Now we'll add measurements with processing to the table. Every minute, we'll have the data logger store the average air temperature. Since the data logger is taking one second measurements, this will be an average of 60 discrete measurements. Other measurements and processing are added in the same way. It's a good idea to store the minimum battery voltage. With a maximum and minimum outputs, you can also store the time that the maximum or minimum occurred. In this example, it will be which second in the 60 was the minimum. I'm not going to store the time. A sample records the latest measured value without any special processing. Other tables or output intervals are set up in a similar way. I'll demonstrate, but you don't have to follow along for this tutorial. When you're done configuring the output, click Finish and save your program. The program is checked for any errors or warnings. And if you've established communications to the data logger, you can send the program now. It is a good habit to collect the data in your CR300 before sending a new program. We can do that through the Connect screen where we'll also send the program. We'll select No and send the program later. Shortcut provides a summary, and under the Advanced tab, you'll see the CR Basic program and other information. 
If you need to go back to your program in the future to make changes, you can. When you're done, close Shortcut after you have finished and save your program. Now that we have our program generated, we'll go back to the Connect screen and send the program to our CR300.